Oh my goodness. Hello, 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 friends, and welcome to the Dead Poets Society. If you do not know, our Lord and Savior, Taylor Swift, announced at the Grammys that her new album, The Tortured Poets Department, would be out April 19th. And some people mentioned that this is the day that the British, the British, fired the first shot of the American Revolution. Um, I don't know if that's intentional or unintentional, um, but it is what it is. I find that very interesting. And as a Swifty, of course, I have many thoughts about this. That was very exciting. We got new album artwork. It was black and white. There were a lot of things leading up to this. We thought that it was going to be the Reputation TV announcement, but then the code on her website, the error code, it said red herring, and there were just, it was just, there was something going on. It was clearly intentional, but it was clearly intentionally a red herring. But also, look what you made me do. The original single from the original 1989 was also a red herring. So was it or was it not? Turns out it was something completely different. And Taylor had her white nails painted to match her white dress, which is the new album era color for the tortured poets department it has this gorgeous black and white kind of just more i don't know i don't want to say adult it's just not something that um little miss americana would have felt comfortable doing on her album cover i guess i think this concept is really interesting i think the idea of just the words tortured poets department it evokes the image of a tortured artist and the idea that like the sad artists that cut off their ears and are addicts and can't sleep and are just torn up inside and at war with themselves those are the ones those are the true artists um absolutely not true then it being a department really and the fact that she this little poem or these lyrics that she posted when she posted the album cover it names her as the chairman of the tortured poets department that really gives um kind of bureaucracy but also it's the way it's on this kind of file um the like letterheadness of it all is really giving detectives department the detective agency but maybe just like this is the department of art that they are in you know that's the category of artists that she counts herself among or maybe it's kind of a little bit of a joke to her ex-boyfriend joe alwyn's group chat with his two little mates that was reportedly called the tortured man club i do think that's all very interesting and I think that it can be and probably is multifaceted and multi-layered and I think that's what's so great about so many of the things that Taylor Swift does is that sometimes they really do have like one intentional point of meaning but a lot of times there's a lot of variances. Um, this was perfect because it means a lot of things. This is the perfect word or the perfect sentence or the perfect verse because it meant a lot of things, you know, and so that's what I think about this album title. But once we get past the title, um, and the gorgeous artwork. Let's flip it over to the back and we get the track list and the back album cover that says, I love you. It's ruining my life. And so many people have already said this. Um, I wasn't going to do this video, which is why it's coming so like late in the game. So like, excuse me for that. But we've gone from you've ruined my life by not being mine to I love you. Ain't that the worst thing you ever heard to I love you, it's ruining my life. And like, that's such like, break up, break through, break free, break down um, of, you know, the lyrics um, in Labyrinth, which is not my favorite song, but that is my favorite lyric from that song because I feel like that just illustrates so many different processes, grief, but also just like the making up and breaking up of, um, a relationship so we did got the, we did get the track list we got it very early um which is interesting compared to the whole midnight's mayhem with me thing i think you know it was fun it was a little long and drug out um for my taste but i do think it was really fun to see content from her constantly in that way and to hear her announce the song titles herself so i really hate to think what other than this could have been planned because it seems pretty obvious to everyone that this track list was posted this early because this track list was actually leaked back in like January and now that the album had been announced that kind of was kind of gaining more buzz and more people were finding out about it and so she I can I can't even imagine how incredibly 
infuriating um it must be as an artist to have your work leaked which is why i really try not to use support leak so that's just awful and the social media and the tiktok of it all is just horrible um but that aside we do have the track list now and it is just so incredibly interesting joe alwyn this to me seems like it's going to be her red her second red i feel like and a lot of other people have said that like that was really the last time we heard about true heartbreak and grief from taylor um because from then it's really just been you know she was in this relationship with him for a really long time for years and years and so you know that's not really an experience um that she's had to like rawly write from as much since then and i feel like you can even see in like some of these track titles just some similar flavors of red and the up and down of the aftermath of a relationship and the during and aftermath and leading up to heartbreak um and i'll talk about a little bit more as we go through the track titles but i wanted to give some like if you are a new Swifty, you know, maybe you are not someone who has listened to all of her content and all of her albums time and time and time again and are just so, so deeply familiar with it. Maybe you've just heard the songs from the Eras tour. Maybe you've just heard some of the albums and not all of others. Um, I want to give some pre-listening material that I think might be the closest ancestors that we have to what this album is going to sound like and the flavor of this album. Them, maybe. I think it's going to be a thing all its own, but I think that if you want a reference for what I think this album is going to kind of sound and be like, um, mood-wise, maybe writing-wise, um, a little bit sound-wise, I don't think we can have exactly what it's going to sound like sound-wise because I think it's definitely going to be its own thing, but I think that some good pre-listening for Tortured Poets Department would be All of Red, um, from beginning to end, just all of the jolts of it and all of the super highs and super lows and the in-betweens and the feeling out and just the moving around of emotions and things that you replay in your head and thoughts that you have coming through and before and after your heartbreak. I think that is absolutely essential listening. The Lakes, I think, is just a very tortured poet song that is in my top 10 Taylor Swift song. I think that is a great flavor kind of pull a little bit from The Last Great American Dynasty. I really think Taylor loves storytelling in this way and I think that there was a track on this that I'm really hoping will be kind of akin to this song um, and a little bit like one of the ones on Red. So I think The Last Great American Dynasty is definitely fantastic pre-listening. I also really like the style of that song just in how it sounds. I really like the production and so I think it would be really cool if we had something that was kind of stylistically like that. And then Afterglow from Lover, oddly enough, I think is a great pre-listen because it has one of the same producers. Mr. Aaron Desner worked on this as well as some other songs with Taylor. And so I think this would be a great one to listen to. I think the production of it is a little bit different. Um, it's not my favorite thing in the world, but it is a little bit different. You can tell that it has a different hand in it and he I'm hoping will have a little bit bigger hand in this. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into the track list and my thoughts on each and every one of those. It's crazy. There are so many thoughts and speculations to be had about these track titles, but at the end of the day, they really could be anything. And like, we could be so wrong. Everyone could be so wrong. Everyone could be so right. Like, it's just, you don't know. And we're going to have to wait until April 19th to find out. And so we saw that with Midnight's, you know, and so I have a lot of thoughts about some of these and then I have like no thoughts about others. So. So fortnight is a British term, um, it's like an English term that means two weeks. And this could be, like all of these, this could be so many things. Could They could have broken up for two weeks and this could be about that two week period of time. This could be about like an anguishing two week period of time or like a heavenly two week period of time. I love a track one because I feel like it really just sets it makes a statement about the tone for the album such a distinctive way i feel like all of taylor swift's albums really album track ones really do this i tend to really like track ones like i love 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 the one um that's one of my favorite track ones i love 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 state of grace another one of my favorite track ones fearless fantastic track one clearly these two weeks are important has it been that long since they've spoken has it been that long since 
they broke up? Has it been that long since they saw each other? What, what is it? Has it been that long since things have been off? What's, what's going on in these two weeks? Um, I have also seen it noted that that's how long she performed Invisible String for before switching to The One, which is a very clear message um, and tone shift, if you will. So maybe, I don't know, to be about like those two weeks and how difficult that was, I don't know. Um, that seems a little bit more, I can do it with a broken heart if you ask me, um, but we'll get to that later. So I also find it very interesting as many people do that this features Post Malone. Um, but like, I don't know, Post Malone is a very like sad boy, like emotional in his feelings rapper. So I can kind of see it a little. I'm very interested in how he's going to be featured. Is this going to be a conversation or is this going to be kind of like a classic um, rapper feature where there's like a verse dropped in? Is this going to be a Kendrick or is this going to be a Bon Iver, if you will? The Tortured Poets Department. I love a title track. I love a track one, but I also love a title track and not all of Taylor's albums have them. Fearless, banger. Speak Now, not necessarily a banger, but you know, we'll give it a pass. Red, banger. Lover, I'm not going to call it a banger, but was great. Evermore. Mwah. Love Evermore. I so badly want to know who the other members of this goddamn department are, and I don't know if we're gonna find out. I think it's just gonna be theoretical, and she's naming herself the chairman because this is her album, and she's like, I am the chairman of the Tortured Poets Department. You know, like, I don't know if there are actual specific other people that are in it other than, you know, Florence um, and Posty, I guess, but I would drop dead if I was able to get a list of others who are in this department um according to her um or it could be a little biting a little bit sarcastic about the like tortured man group chat um either way I just want to find out more about this department and the inspiration for this album and this title and why this is the title of of the album. I feel like it could be a real thesis statement about her and who she feels are her true people. Um, or I think it could be a little bit, I don't know, just a little bit tongue in cheek and a little bit sarcastic. Um, I think maybe those two could marry together and that I would really enjoy. I think that could be really smart. So I know she has it in her. It also occurs to me that I feel like these lyrics are most likely from the title track um just because i feel like it would make sense for her to release lyrics from the title track with the album announcement i could be wrong but i feel like it would be weird for her to just have these lyrics that like she never found a place for but she like felt were so connected to the album um so yeah i think they're from the title track my boy only breaks his favorite toys. That's a little, it just comes off as so infantilizing. I'm sure that's not how it's meant. And I'm sure like, I mean, it is a little bit, but you know what I mean? Like, I feel like the song doesn't necessarily have to be um, like that. I could see it being a little bit like quirky, um, but I could also see it, I don't know why. I feel like this is gonna have like a medium to more upbeat. I don't know why I don't feel like this is gonna be like a really slow, um, one. I want to know why he breaks, he only breaks his favorite ones, is that he plays with them too much? Um, he takes them everywhere, he loses them. Is it like the, like, your family is the one that sees the worst sides to you? Like, you treat your family the worst, um, because, like, you're the most familiar with them, you're the closest with them, you're around them the most, and so they see the worst sides to you, and so, like, he loves you the most um and so he like doesn't think you're ever gonna leave he takes you for granted and so he actually like has the least regard for you because he never thinks he's gonna lose you he never thinks you're gonna go away so you see the worst sides of him um he puts in the least effort is that is that what it is um because that's definitely a dynamic that definitely exists and i would love to hear about it from her it's giving a little bit get your shit together so i can love you from renegade down bad i i <sighs> I think down bad's probably about being down bad and how rough that is. Um, that's a very now term, um, which I guess is like fine. Um, it's just being like really super into someone, really down for someone. Um, typically it's used when like that person probably doesn't feel the same way or you don't know if they feel the same way, um, not always, but you're just like really head over heels um, basically. and. Yeah, I think it's about the tumultuous experience of being down bad. For some reason, it's giving glitch, 
Um, it's giving steamy. It's giving dress a little bit. So that's the end of side A. And I don't know if these songs are just enough in length to where that's just how the vinyl is organized or if there's actually some meaning um, to this like quartering up of the album. I know Midnight's has like six tracks um, on the first side um, because I have it up there and Midnight Rain is the last one like on the side that's facing the front. I'm not entirely sure about that but track five is So Long London and that couldn't be more clear. Um, her most recent boyfriend was English and she definitely kind of took shelter um, and refuge in London and England during her time with him and that definitely became like a second home to her and so the looking back at that and the moving on from that and the washing away of that and just the parsing through of all of those feelings um huh, I feel like if you've been through a breakup you've done it like you have places you have things that you just had like they are not what they were to you anymore because that person is not what they were to you and you can't do anything about that and that's mm, it's a bit it's a bit toughy um and I don't that's something that like it's just painful and you just have to live through it and like let it happen um and let yourself get further from it and like get over it a little bit um and so I feel like hearing about that from Taylor is going to be really painful, especially about somewhere like London, somewhere with so much, just so much to say about it. I'm so sure so much life. I've never been there. I want to be, um, but I'm so excited to hear what she thinks London sounds like and what she thinks the grief of saying goodbye to it sounds like. I would be so shocked if this was a fast track. Everyone thinks it's going to be like very Dear John, very Last Kiss, very uh, Tolerate It, you know, just very heartbreaking and I would love to hear if it was just this fast uh, V like so long um with just these really sad lyrics you know kind of like all you had to do was stay I don't think it will be but that would be crazy I do think that track six might be fast um but daddy I love him just because she tends to really like to do that with a track six um and like whiplash you a little bit not always but she does a little bit and I think that the title sort of lends itself to being funny and quirky I'm so interested like in where she takes this and like how she incorporates this line and if it really does like shape the entire song or if it's just like a thing that keeps coming back and getting touched on throughout the story of the song that really doesn't have anything to do necessarily with the little mermaid or if it's a story that has like little references that tie in with the little mermaid is the dad a character or is this just kind of like a line i mean like is the dad like actually like is it but daddy like talking to an actual father or is it like but daddy i love him and you're like saying this in a repeated chorus as you're telling the story of how you're like fighting against common sense fighting against the opinions of those around you fighting against your own better judgment you know i do really hope the like ariel giving up her voice for a relationship um, element is incorporated. I would love to see that. That's something people keep bringing up and it would just be so interesting if she did. Um, she did wear an Ariel costume to New Year's Eve party where you're supposed to dress as like one of your childhood heroes. I could very much see little Taylor Swift being an Ariel girly. Ariel's a very popular favorite for children. I was an Ariel little girly. I have since grown and I'm more of a Snow White Bell Sleeping Beauty kind of girl, but just uh, the singing element of it and the like falling for a boy and being so headstrong and like, no, I'm gonna get what I want. I'm gonna do what I want. Um, screw you, dad, and anyone who thinks otherwise. And then trading the thing that was so close to her heart to get that and then having the skill and creativity. I just, the more I talk about this, the more I'm like, yeah, this is Taylor. Um, so I really hope the Little Mermaid of it all is really brought to the forefront. Is Ariel part of the tortured poets department? But like, who knows? Like when she was writing this, she very well could have like, it could have been based around totally something else. And she was like, no, this is the line. Like this is the chorus. And she put that in and then that was the title of the song but had nothing to do with like, you know, her voice being taken away and whatever, um, like that before. I don't know. You don't, that's what I'm saying. We just don't know. We just don't know. Why do we speculate? Because it's fun. Anyway, moving on. <laughs> 
fresh out the slammer. I love this title. Um, I think this is going to be like a big F you to the like, I don't know, like kind of being kept inside um, by this relationship. You know how she said in her time article that like the time she spent cooped up inside was time she couldn't get back. And part of that was because of the pandemic. But I feel like she was implying very pointedly that part of it was because of this relationship and the slammer, I think, um, is I keep wanting to say slamma because um, I feel like that's going to be the vibe of this song is going to be about breaking out of that and it feeling good, but feeling different and overwhelming and feeling the sun on her skin in the morning and the wind in her hair constantly and just looking around and feeling that all. Um, it's giving a little bit state of grace, but in a reputation way with a little bit more of an edge to it. Um, I'm really looking forward to this one. I'm not sure we're going to have anything like this one before. I don't know why this one's, this one's calling to me. Florida um, with three exclamation marks. That's how I've been saying it in my head and I can't wait to hear her say it. Um, I feel like either Florence is going to say it or it's going to be like a you know how in Say Don't Go, it's like, say, say, don't, don't go, go. Like there's this background and it's not quite as like in your face. It's a little bit of a gentler. I think it's going to be like that. I think it's going to be more of a vibey situation, um, especially with Florence, or it's going to be in your face and it's going to be like Florida, Florida, like out, like out there um and like florida it's miami baby it's pitbull um mr 305 taylor is mrs 305 now and she is out there in the miami heat and she is feeling wet hot wild and ready to party and i love that for her that is this is going to be the 22 of this album florida we're also the first shows after like the breakup announcement i just picture her like on a beach or in a pool with like slightly wet hair with a drink in her hand just living it up and I hope that's what the song is about. I would love it no matter what it's about but that's my vision. Giving a, t a cross between slut and 22. Guilty as sin. I don't know why this one keeps telling me it's country. I think it's just because I associate like the religious references from Taylor and like pretty much other people in music to be largely country um but I want to know like this is the end of a question what is the larger sentence who is guilty as sin is that sentence different in every chorus do you know what I mean like guilty as sin is the last few words of a fuller sentence I want to know what that fuller sentence is who is it is it her or others what is this is this even about a relationship? Is it about something else entirely? You know, there are wild cards in so many Taylor Swift albums that are like largely, you know, like Red is largely about Jake Gyllenhaal, but then there are songs that are just like, like over there, like not, <laughs> um, you know, you have Starlight. <laughs> And that's just, you know, um, that I do see how that fits into kind of the overall Red album, but it's definitely not within the same very clearly packaged area um, as the other songs. And I think, I don't know, I think this might be one of them. The religious disillusionment is always something that I find interesting when spoken about by Taylor Swift and it's really only in would have could have should have but it's like so much um and I would love to hear more of that from her but I feel like that's probably like not ever gonna happen who's afraid of little old me I don't know why I said that like that I just I don't know the, the phrase little old me <laughs> um it's just so cute and it automatically makes me think of well it could be Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, the movie that stars Richard Burton and Elizabeth Taylor, which she definitely references in Endgame, but it could also just be her talking about the idea that like people are afraid of her, um, including possibly her own partners, and the idea that she still doesn't necessarily feel like that is fully warranted the monster on the hillness of it all everything she does is just giant and smacks and knocks something over and does something giant and how that feels um to be 
that entity and that being and still want to be a person who connects with other people on a human level and how will that ever change it's giving anti-hero a little bit i'm very interested in this one and then we have another one that i'm very curious about i can fix him parentheses no really i can and i don't know why i keep getting a like gorgeous and bejeweled uh vibe from this it's giving quirky and jokey she's like saying this to herself and her friends and i'm just hearing like i can fix him ding like the little ding from gorgeous um or like the nice from bejeweled no really i can it's just interesting that like that's what comes into my head maybe it's just because like i think of those things as being like parentheticals and this has parentheses that's probably why um but like i feel like this is just like a little sarcastic and quirky and jokey because she's saying this to like herself and her friends as she's like going through this relationship like planning everything out and figuring out exactly the steps she's going to take and how this is going to work out she's like looking back in hindsight also just being like yeah girl and how that works and like at the time she meant it in all seriousness and this is like a humorous look back at that but like not without like the pain of what looking back at that is a little bit l-o-m-l -L, um which typically stands for love of my life could also be loss of my life who knows um i i have no thoughts about this one i i feel like it's just not capitalized because that's what's in fashion right now and it kind of fits the aesthetic of the album but i do think like the acronym will get more significant and it will like be heavier and like maybe hurt more um every time we hear it yeah i just i have so few thoughts about this one i can do it with a broken heart i this could either be she could be being badass about it and being very like i can do it with a broken heart and like watch me rise um and like watch me carry this weight around and learn to lift it and feel it get lighter until I don't even notice it's there anymore because I've become stronger and I don't think about it anymore. Or it could be very, you know, incorporating that but in a very heavy, honest, raw way um, about the moments of forgetting and then the moments of remembering. The smallest man who ever lived. I feel like this isn't going to be as much of like a specific dig as people think it's going to be. I'd be, I'd be very interested if it was like a straight up like this is why we can't have nice things um I wouldn't think it's going to be though I would love like a story song I feel like Clara Bow kind of has that tied up though for this album um because I love story songs like Last Great American Dynasty or like you know like an omniscient point of view um going through this man's like trials and tribulations um and like the vignettes that like denote him as such um as the smallest man that ever lived the alchemy so alchemy i've learned um is like the process and the practice of turning like other metals into something into gold into something that resembles gold um and so it looks like gold um and it's taken like a lot of work and science and practice to create but it's not actually as valuable as gold and gold is what she has used to refer to their relationship and to her ex in so 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 many of her songs and so all i can keep hearing in my head is like the alchemy of you and me the alchemy of us and talking about like the building up and the breaking down of that relationship and why it wasn't gold but how they tried to make it that and why it ultimately didn't work out but I'd kind of like it to like tie itself up and be like and this is how we ended up um but that's just the alchemy of you and me Clara Bow. So as I'm sure you've heard um, and many people have been talking about, Clara Bow was the original It girl. She was in a film called It and so she was literally the girl from It. People called her the It girl and so that's how that like term originated. Um, she was who everyone wanted to be. If you've ever seen the um, underrated musical Bonnie and Clyde um, with Laura Osnes and Jeremy Jordan, at the beginning the character of Bonnie, like of Bonnie and Clyde fame, is singing about how she wants to be Clara Bow, the main attraction at the picture show in the movies. Um, she was originally a silent actress and then she ended up becoming prominent and famous in talkies um pictures in which the actors spoke and so she kind of like ariel like didn't have her voice at one point and then found it don't know if that'll be connected but i would really love to see 
just um, an outside commentating on Clara Bow and her story. Um, and within that, just how Taylor sees herself in her. Um, just like, I basically want The Last Great American Dynasty Part 2. That's what I'm asking for in this. That's what I think everyone is asking for in this. But we're also all so excited to see like an old Hollywood streak from Taylor. And so I kind of hope that that vibe isn't just packaged into this one song. I kind of hope it seeps into the rest of the album. The black and white um, and like the typeface is very promising for that. So we'll see. Um, I'm very excited for the song. I know everyone is. Um, I'm afraid it's going to be a little bit slow and not super replayable, but I'm not going to let my hopes fall too far. And finally, we have the bonus track, the manuscript. And a manuscript is something that's written. So did she write it or did someone else write it? And how does she feel about that? What's she trying to do um, about that manuscript that someone else wrote? I don't, does she feel like this is something that's already written that she is living out? Again, is it something that she's creating? Um, is it for the Tortured Poets Department? I I don't know. This one, again, I, I need more. I'm I'm a little lost. I have no, no thoughts. I'm very curious. Um, I just... Ugh. I just want this so bad. I want these songs. I want to listen to them. I want to know. Um, and I just don't, I'm just going to be marinating on this for so many days and weeks and months and long nights that I can't stand it. And I'm sure that's how all of you Swifties feel as well. Thing I hadn't noticed before I recorded this um, is that if you look at the back of the album at the top above all the track titles, it says file name, the manuscript. So is this album the manuscript? Is the whole album the manuscript? Thank you guys so, so much for being here and hearing all of my little thoughts and predictions on the Tortured Poets Department. I don't know if I think she's going to add to the Eras tour or if she's just going to kind of do it in surprise songs. I think it would make sense if she kind of like pulled out a few numbers and then added a few more in from this album. She does have a large break, um, which I'm sure she could use for doing things and promo for this album if she wanted to right around when this album comes out. So we will see. Um, but I just feel like it's too early to like know anything for sure. I feel like we were so wrong about so many things with Midnight. Um, but this does feel like a little bit more of a dialed in specific theme um, than Midnight's did. It feels a little bit less ambiguous um and so yeah i just i cannot overstate how excited i am so thank you guys so much for being here especially if you made it all the way to the end of this video i know there are so many of these videos and i definitely posted this like super late in the game so thank you guys so so much for being here if you did make it this far and you did like it feel free to give it a like it makes me so 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 very happy let me know if you'd like to see more taylor swift videos or videos like this breaking down pop culture things going on from the pop girlies subscribe if you would like to see more videos from me i post usually once a week but honestly it's been a little bit more lately so that remains to be seen i post thrifty swifty fashiony creative 20 something girly content if that sounds interesting to you i would absolutely love to have you here thank you again for being here it means the absolute world to me and i cannot wait to see you in the next one Mwah.